I don't think there's any doubt when we look at the universe, it seems a package of marvels. It's ingenious, uh, it's ordered, it's mathematical, and it's felicitous in the sense that it permits the existence of life and beings like ourselves who can reflect on it. Wow, it looks like a fix, it looks like it's been designed. And the question is, has it been designed? And if not, well, how can we explain this appearance of design? Now, I suppose most of my scientific colleagues feel uncomfortable with these sorts of questions. They would say, if pressed, that there is no reason for why the, the world is the way it is. Uh, and yes, sure, it works well and it looks designed and aren't we lucky to be here, but there's ultimately no reason to it. And I've always thought that it's extraordinary to try to ground the rationality and logical nature of scientific inquiry on ultimate absurdity. That, uh, that the whole thing is just floating for no reason, and yet it uh, mimics the appearance of rationality and order uh, and design so well. Uh, so I don't think that's very satisfactory. So uh, then there's a, a, another group of colleagues who think more deeply about this, and they say, well, uh, if we come to some final theory of complete unification of physics, we'll see that actually uh, th this is the only way it can be, and that it's just a stroke of luck. It permits the ex existence of... Uh, beings like ourselves. Now, they don't have that theory yet. This is promissory triumphalism. <laughs> so I think it's demonstrably false that there can only be one way that the universe can exist. So then there's another group of people who say, well, maybe all possible universes exist. Maybe that what we've been calling the universe uh, is only a tiny component in a much vaster system that they call the multiverse. And it's important that between one universe and another, uh, the laws can change. In other words, the laws you find in the textbooks in uh, physics libraries are just effective laws. They're just uh, local bylaws, if you like. Uh, they're not universal, absolute laws, and they can vary from one to the other. And if they vary randomly, well, then it's no surprise that here and there you'll find a universe where things come out just right for life. Uh, in other words, we will be winners in a gigantic cosmic lottery, but there will be no ultimate significance to the fact that this universe was fit for life. And the problem with that idea uh, is that you have to accept the existence of these other universes on faith, and it leads to some sort of absurdities, because if there's an infinite number of universes and an infinite number of variations on a theme, and indeed an infinite number of versions of this conversation. So that seems like overkill. So uh, then we uh, move on to the I guess, traditional argument that if the universe looks as if it's been designed, well, maybe it has been designed, maybe there's a great cosmic designer. Uh, it doesn't have to be a cosmic magician, a super being who exists within time prior to the Big Bang, waves a magic wand and makes the Big Bang go bang. That's a sort of Sunday school version. It could be something uh, more subtle. God as designer in the sense of being the rational ground in which the laws of physics or the laws of nature are ultimately rooted. So this could be a more abstract notion of a designer being. But one is bound to ask, well, where did this being come from? Uh, now, in order to make this idea work, you would have to develop an argument that this uh, designer being necessarily exists and necessarily has the property that that being has. Are you any better off? Haven't you just sort of pushed the problem off into an abstract domain, but you've not really solved it? So that makes me feel uncomfortable too. And the final version, which is what I'm inclined to by temperament, is that somehow the universe has engineered its own self-awareness. That the uh, fine-tuning of the parameters which is necessary for life in the universe, the universe has done it itself. The problem is it does seem to require a backwards causation. In other, in other words, that the existence of beings like ourselves now uh, observers who can look at the universe and make sense of it has somehow got to have selected the nature of the laws right back at the Big Bang that have given rise to a universe that can produce carbon and all the other things necessary for life. How can that be? How can we reach back in time in that manner? Uh, well, at first sight, it seems absurd, but when you look more carefully, physics actually has a natural mechanism to permit that to happen, uh, and it comes out of quantum physics. What I'm suggesting, then, is that the laws of physics, mathematics, observers who can understand it all are all somehow mutually explanatory and co-emergent, that they all come out of uh, the wellspring of existence and uh, support each other in some self-consistent way. That sounds kind of ridiculous, doesn't it? But then they're all ridiculous. All of these things, all of these points of view, ultimately, when you look at them, uh, have a sort of ridiculous uh, feel about them. <laughs>